true or false, America is specifically referred to in Bible prophecy. That's mine, so I'll go last. Mm, okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll answer first because my answer is going to be so short. Uh, uh, absolutely, certainly, 100% certain uh, false. It's not. There's... Um, I, again, th there's a lot of things that, that people want to um, uh, 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 the theological term for it is eisegesis. You try to put it into the Bible. When the Bible doesn't say anything about it, we insert an idea in there and try to impose our ideas on the scriptures. But if we're using exegesis, which is, hey, what does the scripture say? Period. Well, there's there's nothing in the scriptures that would uh says anything about that and for us to uh come to those conclusions in fact uh, so so much about uh, uh, uh eschatology and end, end times uh, uh we the, the the position of the america today is that all of this is supposed to be applied to future and i really came to the conclusion that uh most of this is really doesn't apply to the future at all uh, I do think that, and I know, that uh, we, we look forward to a, a second coming of Jesus and, and, and a resurrection and um, a, um, the, the separation of the, the sheep and the goats and the judgment and the and new heavens and new earth and off into eternity. Uh, that we certainly know is future. Apart from that, though, I, I think it's a mistake to uh, apply all of that to some uh, future uh, events and it, we, it's very easy to see how that w was should be applied to the past but uh, if if you want details on that you'll have to go to my playlist on eschatology it's been revised quite a bit uh, over the last few weeks but there's a lot in there that's going to be quite uh, challenging uh, a person has to be very serious I think if you go into that playlist um, most people are don't have the uh, patience or interest or, or um, persistence to, to really learn everything that's uh, that, that's on that playlist. It, it probably, uh, I think most people's attention span for this kind of a thing is, is just, you know, this much. But if you do uh, have the, the desire and the time and the, 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 the interest to, uh, to do it, then I think that you'll find that uh, really almost everything that we apply to the future should already be applied to the first century. Uh, I forgot what the question was now. <laughs> I don't remember what the question was. The question was, was America is specifically referred oh, yeah. to in Bible prophecy. Yeah, yeah. So I went off on a little tangent there, but yeah, I, I certainly false is my answer. Okay, who wants to go next? It's false. Uh, America's not there. I've heard some crazy things. People have tried to force America in it. They've tried to force it in as Babylon or um, now they're only some of the nations that split off after Babel. They may have migrated here, but America as a nation is not mentioned. I've heard them try to say, see the eagle. The eagle was Rome's symbol. The eagle was relating to Rome, you know, where the carcasses are, the eagle will be there. It, that's referring to Rome when the Jews were slaughtered. Um, so I, I have heard uh, some really, like you said, eisegesis, where they are just trying to cram America into the scriptures. And the West is so self-centered, <laughs> you know, we think everything is about us. But no, I when I read the scriptures, it seems like everything is around uh, the the middle or the Near East. You know, from Israel's perspective, if it's north, it's north of Israel. If it's east, it's east of Israel in the scriptures. So um, no, absolutely not. I've tried to find it there, and I've, I've I think I may have heard every every uh, idea there is on trying to make america um into the scriptures specifically 
Are there attributes of nations that we qualify? Sure, but every nation on earth does wicked things. But no, America itself is not, I do not believe, is in scripture. Yeah, I, I remember years ago, I read a book uh, by uh, uh, Ellen White, who is the, uh, the founder of the Seventh-day Adventists. And with them, she's considered a prophet. That's uh, And her writing is, is equal and even is, uh, supersedes the, the, the Bible itself. But uh, she wrote a book called um, America in Prophecy. And the first half of the book uh, was very interesting because it really gave you a history of the persecution of the church throughout history, much of what you will also find in the book Fox's Book of Martyrs. But then when you get to the second half of the book, it moves to America. And uh, um, that, that's the viewpoint that they take there is that much of the prophecy applies to uh, America. Uh, and uh, the, one of the things that the people, uh, viewpoints or, or let's say uh, methods of applying prophecy in, in, in times uh, in the scriptures is called historicism. And that's where you're, you're applying the scriptures to events throughout all of history. And uh, so that would be something that in that line of thinking, the historicist viewpoint that they, they would uh, try to attribute to a lot of people and, uh, and a lot of places in the world throughout history. But uh, all right, uh, let me see uh, who wants to go next. I'll go. I'll, okay. okay. <laughs> go ahead, Sister Lisa. Go ahead. Well, I'll be I'll be brief. Uh, I answered certainly true. Uh, I see. Huh? I I like to refer to America. Say it's uh, it's Egypt, Mystery Babylon, Tyre and Zidon, unrepented Nineveh, and Solomon Gomorrah all rolled into one. So I see all all kinds of a uh, uh, America uh, from what I see and the evil she's doing. Uh, I mean, we actually got a drag queen out in New York Harbor that represents Lucifer. So, uh, yeah, I see America all through the scripture. I don't know why other people can't, but I don't I want to go off on a tangent on that. I know I have to do more study on that, but I, I answered certainly true. Well, Lisa, I said I see attributes of America in the scriptures. But America specifically as one of the nations, I do not. So I agree with you. There are wicked things like Sodom and Gomorrah and stuff that I believe are representative of this country. But there's other countries just as wicked, if not worse, that, that I agreed with you on that statement. But I don't see them specifically in the scriptures. Um, I agree. Um, the specific... I don't think that we are referred to specifically. And I think that Renee put it very well when she said that we are um, a very selfish people that we would see ourselves in anything. Um, but I don't think we are specifically um, mentioned in the, in the end times prophecies. And I have a reason that I believe that. Um, but I do believe as Renee was saying that we we definitely look like all of them. We we look like every single one of them. We look like the the um, Babylon mystery Babylon. We look like um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm distracted. Little little man over here is being noisy. But we do. We we look a lot like all of all of the the people that are represented. Um, and I see where um, Lisa was mentioning the Statue of Liberty. I've, I've actually done some research into this and, and I, for a while there thought that we were mystery Babylon, but here's my point as to why I don't think we are and take it or leave it. But my, um, everything that is written about the end times is written about the people from the Middle East. Um, there's uh, um, mostly they are the descendants of Abraham who came from other marriages or other concubines or, you know, other means that were not um, 
that were not what God's plan was for him. There's also the descendants of Lot, who are a family of Abraham, who um, were the Moabites and the Am Ammonites, I think. Um, but the reason that, that I don't believe that we are specific, the United States of America is specifically mentioned, is because this book was written to, the, to Israel. And even though at the moment we are allies with Israel, we are not a consideration because they didn't know about us. So, I mean, they didn't know about America. So, um, I mean, you can, you can look at it as other countries, even on, on that part of the world, that hemisphere of the world, there are other countries that are not mentioned. Um, but, I just don't believe that 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 is us. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm so distracted by little man over here. But um, uh, I don't believe it's us. I believe that there is something coming for us, but I don't believe it's something biblical. Um, I just believe that there has to be a reason that we don't come to Israel's defense. Um, and for that reason, I believe that there is some sort of a judgment coming for America but I don't see us in scripture. That's basically what I had to say. All right, let me see. Did we miss someone? Is, has everybody answered this? Ben. Ben? Oh, okay. Um, no, I, I do not believe it's specifically mentioned in the Bible. Um, I, you know, if you think of the names of the nations in the, in the Old Testament, they, like, like Heather said, actually, they are names that were established early on. I think it's important to let scripture interpret itself. You know, uh, in fact, I, I'm really uh, very, I, I maybe too, too, maybe I'm too rigid, but at the same time, I don't, I think it's a good position to be in. Um, as I know a lot of people, when they interpret scripture, they'll look at historical events. They're like, Oh, we know, well, we know this happened. We know this happened. I don't trust anything from history. Frankly, I don't, I mean, I'm not saying I, I totally reject it. I'm just saying, I try not to let it factor into my interpretation of scripture. If, 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 if at all possible, I'll let scripture try to interpret the scripture. So for example, um, look, you know, this example of mine where it says like, people will say, uh, the Nicolaitans in revelation, uh, that it's about, you know, the, uh, the church leadership elevating themselves over the laity because you know, the Nicolaitans or laity. Um, and, I don't, again, the, I think the Bible tells you, and, and so they, that's not really problematic, per se. that's a, a pretty harmless example, but there's a couple of verses down from that tells us exactly what the Nicolaitans' sin was, and it was that they uh, uh, had worship, they were uh, commit, you know, committed idolatry, sacrificing things, uh, eating, eating things sacrificed to idols, and sexual immorality. So again, I think it's important to let scripture interpret our scripture that way. And for America, for example, I don't see the word America in the Bible, all the nations of the Bible uh, I believe they come from the original 70 nations that were scattered at Babel. So you hear names like Gomer, Magog, Cush. And so I don't, I, I believe all the nations, I think the, a lot of the delineation of national boundaries we see today do not resemble at all what they were when God originally divided up the nations. Um, there's been a lot of, uh, just like languages, the languages were also divided at that time, but they've kind of over time uh, kind of intermingled and now it's not so clear. It's a little, a little more blurry. Um, but I think, so I think it's important to use the biblical definition of, of nations when it, uh, talks about nations. And, um, so I think that's very important too. And also too, I know this sounds crazy and uh, I, I resisted it at first too, because it just sounds so preposterous. But when I, when I really, really studied it out, I think when it talk, the revelation talks about mystery Babylon, for example, it's talking about literal ba Babylon. I know that sounds stupid. I know it sounds crazy. Um, and especially when you hear things like, well, Ben, you know, there's, there's seven hills in Rome and there's seven hills in, uh, Jer in, in Jerusalem or in all these different parallels. But I, I have studied it quite extensively. And each of those things can be dismissed, actually. And I think you, if you did the same, saw the same information I saw, you would probably come to the same conclusion. But one thing that's very important, I think, is uh, there's a verse in Revelation that says, you know, mystery, Babylon, mother, mother of B B Babylon, the great mother of harlots. It says mystery Babylon. And, you know, mystery in the Bible doesn't indicate something that's, uh, that a man can search out 
through investigation or discovery. Mystery in the Bible means it's something unknowable by man unless God reveals it. And um, so, again, I think mystery in, in Revelation, which says mystery Babylon, it, it, doesn't, it, it relates to her identity and her relationship to the uh, seven-headed beast with the ten horns, which is talked about in Revelation 17. And uh, the, I, I, there's uh, people who've studied this, uh, some good commentators. I, I think, again, I think the Greek, uh, 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 the Greek informs us of this. It's backed up by the Greek and it's backed up by uh, other evidence I've looked at. But, um, you know, in Revelation, it's com commonly, uh, when it says uh, mystery Babylon, mother of harlots, you know, an abomination of the earth, that's in all capitals. And it's actually pretty evident from the Greek that the word, when it says mystery Babylon, the word mystery should not be in all caps. It's really, it, it's really saying more like, it's, it's more like saying, uh, or a better translation would be, and on her forehead was the name written, a mystery, comma, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abomination of the earth. So, uh, it's, it, it, mystery Babylon is not part of her title. It's it, basically God is saying, hey, Babylon is coming back. Like, 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 again, just like Isaiah said, I tell you from the, the end from the beginning. Well, Babylon was the mother of harlots. She was the first, uh, th that, that nation was the, or that, 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 uh, civilization was the first to, um, again, whenever the Bible talks about mother, father, son, et cetera, it doesn't mean that there's a direct relationship. It means that person or thing is reflecting that character and that character they're reflecting is the first person in the Bible that reflected that character. So again, in Genesis, we're talking about, I can't remember, I know uh, Tubal Cain was the master of instrumentation. I know that's not right, but uh, it's, I forgot who it was. Um, but it doesn't mean like everyone who plays an instrument is, is, is a physical des descendant of Tubal Cain. Uh, again, I know I had that name wrong. But it just means that they're reflecting that person's character. Like, just like we're son, we're Abraham's children. We're children in the fact that we reflect his, his character of faith. Um, and so Mother uh, Babylon, Mother of Harlots, I believe, is a return of M B Babylon. Um, that's what I personally think. Uh, again, that whether you agree with that or not, uh, that's something we could, I, I actually want to look. It's impossible for me to unpack that right now. Um, and it does sound crazy, I know. But um, anyway, uh, I do believe, like I said, America is not specifically listed in the nations because, again, all the nations are really named after its founding member or fa founding family. And um, I, I don't know, I don't, unless, you know, it's, I, don't, I think it's, if there, if there is a name in the Bible, like, for example, Cush, I think is what, uh, no, Misriam is, is, the, uh, fa or is the patriarch, or so to speak, of Egypt, I believe. And unless we don't know, there's no, no, I have heard no one ever say, oh, well, we could trace this name to the people who settled America. Um, I just think it's, it was kind of out of scope. Um, in fact, I think much of the North America and South America is probably out of scope in terms of, of those early days, because that, that was, those were probably the most remote regions of the earth. Um, so again, I, I don't see any name in the Bible that would reflect uh, America. And I don't think America specifically is, you know, called out specifically, uh, in the, in, in the, uh, in Bible prophecy, but I, I certainly do believe it plays a role, uh, just like every person that ever lived plays a role in Bible prophecy, uh, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, I guess everybody's had a turn, I guess, but the, yeah, I would say you're right, Ben, that uh, America is there in terms of, uh, as, as the history comes to a close, and we know that uh, the world reaches, comes to a climax of uh, this uh, and ends and uh, the Lord returns uh, that America, you know, I'm assuming we still exist at that time. If that's the case, then we will have some, something uh, place in, in, in history as it's closing out. But uh, uh, the scriptures, I don't think and there's anything specifically that would point, point to it. Uh, but, but yeah, obviously, is the world's coming to an end and America is such a prominent country in the world, then uh, you, you could say that it's there in that way. I think that's what you, you just said, Ben. Uh, and I wanted to tell Ben, I have uh, considered Babylon and for a long time I kept saying it's mystery, Babylon the Great. And it was referring to literal Babylon. Uh, however, I, I still do believe it is a, uh, um, Jerusalem, because they're drunk on the blood of the saints. They're the ones that kill the prophets. They're Sodom and Egypt. 
and uh, we'll you know we'll have a conversation about that. And uh, Heather, um, and I could be wrong, Ben. That's why I want to have a conversation with you, uh, Heather. Uh, I agree with you. America can't be Babylon the Great because we're not in the desert and we're not drunk on the blood of the saints. That's two major things that we don't, you know, qualify for. And we're not a city. We're a nation of states. So it, it wouldn't uh, fit. Uh, but we sure do have some of the attributes. That's what I was saying earlier. And Lisa was, you know, with the Statue of Liberty. I think that Statue of uh, Liberty is a goddess, isn't it? A pagan goddess, Lisa? Oh, uh, you know, I haven't fully re researched all of it. Um, with the Statue of Liberty, you know, Lucifer, it, Luf Lucifer is referred to as the great liberator in many of uh the writings by Luciferians, and then he has a, a tour. If you look at the face of the Statue of Liberty, is I believe it's clearly masculine, and then it has the uh, the sun rays coming from its head, which mm. is representative of many different goddesses, uh, like Columbia, for example, and mm. then it has uh, the torch, which is representative of the light bearer. So, you know, <laughs> you tell me, there's yeah. a masculine face with a toga on, so the the toga is also representative of Rome. So there's a lot going on with that symbolism of that statue. And androgyny is a big thing, too. And, and not to mention it's an idol, which the Lord forbids. So. Well, look at this. Uh, okay, so one thing, I, again, I'm, I'm kind of with you, Renee. I, I'm, I'm torn between is it, is it Jerusalem or uh, actual Babylon for a couple of reasons. One is, again, Babylon is called the mother of harlots. So she has daughters. And there's elsewhere in scripture, you know, it says Sodom is Israel's sister, both daughters of the harlot. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, in Revelation, it says the great city, which yeah. spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. And that great city, I mean, that that, that great city right. is, is, is Babylon in, in Revelation. So right. I am torn. But it, I, I, like I said, uh, I think yeah. there's... Little Babylon, because they came out of Babylon and just brought it with her. That's a good point. And also, too, is that, um, and, and, and with, with regards to Lisa, I believe America could be a sister or a daughter of the harlot, and yeah. that the Statue of Liberty could be a, a representation of that. She's a daughter of, of the harlot. I was just yeah. about to mention that. I was going <laughs> to say, have you considered that um, the scripture references uh, the daughter of Babylon? And um, if even. It, with our connection to what Renee believes is Babylon, which is Israel over there, then it, uh, look how connected America is to uh, the nation of Israel over there um, and how connected they are in our politics and everything else. So are we the daughter of Babylon? There's a strong case for that. I listed a number of the reasons why people think that in the... Uh, in the chat, but I'll, I'll read it off here. Yeah. Um, the, the daughter of Babylon, uh, the hammer of the whole earth. Okay. You think about our military and where we go, the latter, a latter day nation. We were only a couple hundred years old, a nation of wealth and luxury, uh, who live on many waters, uh, center of world commerce. They have a great voice. Uh, are mad upon um, are mad upon your idols as references to scripture. N America is full of idols. Uh, we even have a TV program called American Idol, where other nations gather, and nation means ethnic groups. And what does the statue literally say? Give me, give me your poor. Give me all this. Uh, um, that's all America has been about is immigration, uh, people from other nations, and then. Uh, she has been proud against the Lord. And I think that is also a true statement when you look at all of the things that are going on, uh, particularly with the whole gay agenda. Their whole theme is pride and America is supporting that. Our politicians are supporting that and pushing that. And so there's a lot of uh, clues there. And that's just 10 of many that are listed in the scripture that she could be the daughter of Babylon. I was telling Luke yesterday that uh, Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv is the capital head. It's the world headquarters, so to speak, of the gay agenda. Yes, like, it is. I didn't yeah. know that till recently. Hmm. I didn't know that till recently. Yeah, that's they have the biggest like gay pride rally or party in the world. 
there. Yep. Hmm. Well, uh, I know that the Statue of Liberty was given to us by France. And it was given to us after the French Revolution, where they basically, that revolution was to uh, reject uh, uh, theism and, and, and God and uh, to make France into a secular country. So uh, in, in that way, the Statue of Liberty is uh, certainly could be, uh, is, is, is tainted at least. Um, there's actually a lot of evidence that shows that the Statue of Liberty is directly connected to Isis, the Queen of Heaven. Um, I, I, I cannot give references at the moment because I don't remember exactly, but I will look it up. Um, but there were a, a lot of um, things connecting... Um, connecting the Statue of Liberty and where it came from and how it came to be here with Isis and the Queen of Heaven. So um, basically all of this mother worship comes through the, the Statue of Liberty. And yes, as a we, we are a daughter of Babylon for sure. And I believe that that is why we are so connected with Israel. Mm 